Chapter One: Life on the Earth. Children, till now you must have come to know that the Earth is the only planet where life exists. Humans, plants, animals, and variety of tiny organisms called microorganisms also live on this Earth. Can you guess why life exists on the Earth only? It is because air, water, and light, which are essential for life, are available on the Earth only. Elements that support life on the Earth: air. Earth is surrounded by a thick layer of air called atmosphere. Air is a mixture of gases like nitrogen, oxygen, carbon dioxide, and some others. Animals breathe air for oxygen, which releases energy from the food you eat. With this energy, you can do various activities. Plants use carbon dioxide to prepare their food. Humans and animals take oxygen and release carbon dioxide, which in turn is taken by plants, releasing oxygen. Hence, a balance of these gases is maintained in the atmosphere. Water. All living beings need water to live. Water is present in rivers, ponds, lakes, seas, oceans, and under the ground. It is also present in the atmosphere as water vapor. Water helps in digestion and regulates your body temperature. Light and warmth. The sun is the main source of light and heat on the earth. All green plants use sunlight to prepare their food. Animals and humans are dependent on the plants, so they are indirectly dependent on the sun. The temperature of the earth is suitable for life to exist. Minerals. Soil contains minerals. Plants and animals need minerals for their growth and healthiness. Plants absorb minerals through their roots. Human beings and animals can offset minerals directly. They get minerals by eating plants and other animals. Lack of minerals causes deficiency diseases. Iron, calcium, phosphorus, and iodine are some important minerals. Interdependence between plants and animals. Plants, human beings, and animals are interdependent. Plants provide food and oxygen to animals and humans. And they, in turn, give carbon dioxide to the plants. Some animals eat flesh of other animals, so flesh-eating animals also depend on plants indirectly. Plants, on the other hand, depend on animals for dispersal of seeds and pollination. Chapter two: Plants, producers of food. Plants are the basic source of food. For all living things, they make their own food. All other animals and humans depend on them for food, directly or indirectly. There would be no food on the earth without green plants. Most plants are full of green leaves. Leaves are green due to the presence of a green pigment called chlorophyll. Plants make food in their leaves with the help of chlorophyll. Part of leaf. The flat part of a leaf is called leaf blade. Each leaf has one main vein and many side veins, which transport water from the stem to all parts of the leaf. Do you know? The world's largest leaves are those of the raffia palm, which grow up to 20 meters long. On the surface of a leaf, there are millions of tiny pores called stomata. A single pore is called stoma. The leaves of plants take carbon dioxide from the atmosphere through the stomata. Functions of a leaf. A leaf performs the following functions. It makes food for the plant. It helps the plant to breathe through stomata. Some plants like spinach, cabbage. Store food in their leaves. Some plants are used as medicines, like tulsi and mint. How do leaves make food? 
Plants make food in the presence of sunlight. Chlorophyll, taking carbon dioxide, water and minerals. Water is absorbed by the roots and is carried to the leaves by stem. Chlorophyll traps sunlight. Then the food is prepared by the leaves. Oxygen and extra water is given out. This process of preparing food by the leaves with the help of sunlight, water and carbon dioxide in the presence of chlorophyll is called photosynthesis. Photo means light. Synthesis means putting together. Leaves are also known as the food factory of plants. Do you know all the world's plants together make 150 billion tons of food, sugar, every year during photosynthesis. How do plants use food? Plants store the prepared food in the form of sugar. They use food in the following ways. Plants need energy to grow and produce leaves, flowers, fruits and seeds. A part of the food is used to repair the damaged cells and tissues. Extra food is stored as starch in roots, stems or leaves. They also store food in fruits and seeds too. Animals and humans eat this food. A simple way of learning photosynthesis is carbon dioxide from air through stomata plus water and minerals from soil through roots and stems in the presence of sunlight and chlorophyll gives sugar stored as starch and sugar in fruits, seeds, stem and roots plus water plus oxygen. Plants that do not make food some plants do not prepare their food on their own. They get food from the dead and decaying matter. They are called saprophytic plants like molds and mushrooms. They are also called fungi. Mushrooms are a rich source of proteins. Activity 1. Test for starch in a leaf. Aim to test the presence of starch in leaves. Things required. A green leaf. A test tube. Some water. Spirit. A beaker. A burner. And iodine. Method. Put the leaf in beaker with water. Boil the water. Keep the leaf now in a test tube with spirit. Keep the test tube in hot water for a minute. When the green color of leaf fades away, remove it, wash it in cold water. Removing the color is called bleaching. Add a few drops of iodine to the leaf. It will turn blue. Result. When iodine is added to the starch, it turns blue. It shows the presence of starch in the leaf. Activity 2. Chlorophyll is needed for photosynthesis. Aim. To test that chlorophyll, green pigment, is needed for photosynthesis. Things required. A coleus leaf with two colors. Water. Beaker. Dropper. Burner. Spirit. And iodine solution. Method. Take the leaf and boil it in water. Then boil it in spirit and wash it with cold water. Add a few drops of iodine solution to it. You will see that the green part of the leaf turns bluish black, while the red part of the leaf remains the same. This shows that only the green part of the leaf, which contains Chlorophyll could carry out photosynthesis and the non-green part could not. Result. This proves that chlorophyll is needed for photosynthesis. Activity 3. Sunlight is essential for photosynthesis. Aim. To show that sunlight is necessary for 
photosynthesis. Things required. Two potted plants and water. Method. Take two potted plants. Keep one in the sunlight and the other in a dark room. Water the plants every day for a week. Pluck one leaf from each pot and test for starch. The leaf exposed to sunlight will turn blue, while the other will not. Result. This shows that sunlight is necessary for photosynthesis. Chapter 3. Plants. Growing and Surviving Children, you know plants grow almost everywhere on the earth. In plains, deserts, on ocean beds, on mountain slopes and in river valleys. Plants in different parts of the earth have different features. In hilly areas, they are tall and most of them have needle-like leaves, while in the plains they have many branches and leaves. Why are they different in different areas? The answer is that, to live successfully, plants have to adjust themselves to their surroundings. This process of adjustment in a particular surrounding is called adaptation. Due to this adaptation, plants of different surroundings are different. Types of plants. Vast varieties of plants are found on the earth. Some grow on land and some in water. Plants growing on land are called terrestrial plants and plants growing in water are called aquatic plants. Thus, plants are of two types, terrestrial and aquatic plants. Terrestrial plants. The land has different features like plains, hills, mountains and deserts. Some parts of land receive heavy, some medium or very little rainfall. Some areas receive snowfall instead of rain. Now I will tell you how the plants have adapted themselves to live in a particular area. Plants in hilly areas and mountains. Plants growing in very cold places like hilly areas and mountains are usually tall, straight and have a cone shape so that snow can easily slide off. They are usually flowerless and have needle-like leaves. Instead of flowers, they have cones and thus are called conifers. The leaves have a waxy coating to protect them from snow. Pine, spruce, cypress, deodor, cedar and fir are conifers. Some small flowerless plants like mosses, ferns and lichens also grow here. Plants in Plains A large variety of plants grow in the plains. In plains, trees may have several branches and leaves. Many of them shed their leaves in winter and bear new leaves in the spring. For example, Neem, Gulmohar, People, Ashok, Sal, and Shisham, etc. They are also called deciduous trees. Plants in deserts. In deserts, only those plants can survive which need very little water. Cactus, baboon, kika, and date palms grow in deserts. These plants either do not have any leaves or have very few leaves to prevent loss of water. Photosynthesis is carried out by the green stems. They have thorns. Plants in marshy areas. Plants that grow in marshy areas are called mangroves. Soil in marshy areas is deficient in air. Hence, here plants have breathing roots called pneumatophores. Sundari tree is a mangrove which grows in Sundarban Delta of West Bengal. Plants in hot and wet places. Plants growing in hot and wet places like sea coasts do not shed their leaves in a particular season. They remain green all through the year and are called 
evergreen trees. Examples of such plants are coconut, sugarcane, pepper, rubber, etc. Aquatic plants. Plants that grow in lakes, ponds, rivers and oceans are called aquatic plants. They can be of three types. Floating aquatic plants. Plants that float freely on the surface of water are called floating aquatic plants. Duckweed and water hyacinth are common aquatic plants. They are usually light and spongy, so they float on water easily. Fixed aquatic plants. These plants have their roots fixed to the mud at the bottom of the pond. They have thin, long and hollow stems. Leaves of these plants are broad, flat, with a waxy coating on the surface to prevent them from rotting. Lotus and water lily are the common examples of fixed aquatic plants. Hollow stem of lotus is called Kamal Kakri, which is used as vegetable. Underwater aquatic plants. These plants grow below the water surface and have thin and narrow leaves without stomata. They breathe through their body surface. For example, hydrilla, pig grass and pondweed are underwater aquatic plants. Non-green plants. These plants do not have chlorophyll to produce their own food. Such plants do not have leaves, stems and roots. They are called fungi, which grow on wet things like rotting wood vegetables, etc. Some examples are molds and mushrooms. Insectivorous plants. Plants like Venus flytrap, sundew and pitcher plant have green leaves that prepare food for them. But they grow in places where they do not get all the minerals which they need. In order to get these minerals, they trap insects. Such plants are called insectivorous plants. Chapter 4 Animals Living and Surviving Children, like plants, animals also live in different parts of the earth. The natural place or environment of a living thing is called its habitat. Like plants, animals also have adapted themselves to live in different habitats. Adaptation to Habitat Animals can be grouped according to their habitats. Let me tell you about them. Terrestrial animals. Animals that live on land are called terrestrial animals. Animals like lions, horses and dogs have legs to move and lungs to breathe. They also have well-developed nervous system and sense organs. Animals like snakes do not have legs, but they have scales on their bodies. Scales help them to crawl. Animals in cold areas, like polar bears, have fur on their bodies to keep themselves warm. The skin of animals of desert, like the camel, is thick and not very hairy to protect them from heat. In winters, some animals like frogs, lizards, sleep for several months to protect themselves from the cold. This is called hibernation. Aquatic animals. Animals that live in water are called aquatic animals. Fishes live in water. They have fins to swim. They breathe through special organs called gills. Some water animals, like whales and dolphins, do not have gills. They come up to water surface to take in oxygen through their lungs. Turtle Turtle have paddle-like limbs to push water back as they swim. Amphibians Animals that spend their lives partly in water and partly on land are called amphibians. Frogs Salamanders and newts are amphibians. They have limbs to swim in water. 
they breathe through skin in water and through their lungs on land. Aerial animals Animals that fly are called aerial animals. They have wings to fly. They have light bones and feathers. They have tails, which help them to change their direction while flying. Birds, insects and bats are examples of aerial animals. Bat is the only mammal that can fly. Arboreal animals. Animals that spend most of their time on trees are called arboreal animals. Monkeys, tree lizards and squirrels are arboreal animals. They have sharp claws and broad hip girdles for climbing. Monkeys use their tails to balance themselves and grip the branches. Adaptations to food habits According to their food habits, animals can be grouped in four ways. Herbivores, carnivores, omnivores and parasites. Herbivores Animals that eat plants are called herbivores. Cows, goats, zebras and elephants are herbivores. They have sharp cutting teeth and strong grinding teeth. They have long and strong legs to travel. Carnivores Animals that eat the flesh of other animals are called carnivores. Lions, tigers, cheetah and wolves are carnivores. They have long pointed curved front teeth and strong grinding back teeth. With front teeth, they hold and tear the flesh and with back teeth, they chew the flesh. Flesh-eating birds like eagle and vulture have sharp beaks and claws to catch and eat their prey. Omnivores Animals that eat both plants and animals are called omnivores. Bears, crows, dogs and humans are omnivores. Parasites Some animals live on or inside the bodies of other animals for their food. They are called parasites. Mosquitoes, leeches, hookworms and bugs are parasites. They have sucking tubes to suck blood. Adaptations for protection. Animals have adapted to protect themselves from their enemies in many ways. Some animals are huge like elephant, hippopotamus and bear. Their size scares away most of their enemies. Some animals have very strong legs to run away fast to escape from the danger. For example, stags, deer and gazelles. A bird protects itself by flying away from danger. Some animals have stripes or dots on their bodies which help them to merge or mix with their surroundings. They thus confuse their enemies. For example, zebras and leopards. This is known as camouflage. A chameleon can change the color of its body according to the surroundings. Chapter 5 Reproduction in Animals Children, all living things have a definite lifespan. They grow with time, become old and then die. For life to go on, all living things reproduce their own kind. The process by which the living things produce young ones of their own kind is called reproduction. On the basis of reproduction, animals are divided in two groups. 
animals that lay eggs and animals that give birth to young ones. Animals that lay eggs. Some animals reproduce by laying eggs. Parent animals keep these eggs in warm place or they sit on the eggs to keep them warm. When they are matured, the young ones hatch out. Birds, reptiles, frogs, fish, insects, and crabs, etc. lay eggs. Structure of an egg. An egg has a thin, protective shell called eggshell. It contains a yellow yolk surrounded by white albumen. Albumen provides food to the chick growing inside it, called embryo. The embryo develops into a chick only when the egg is kept warm. Birds. All birds reproduce by laying eggs. The parent birds sit on the eggs to keep them warm. This period is called incubation. When the chicks are fully grown, they break the shell and come out. This is called hatching. Insects. Insects also lay eggs. Houseflies and butterflies have four stages of development. A cockroach has only three stages of development. The larva of a cockroach is known as a nymph. The eggs of a butterfly or housefly develops into a worm-like larva called a caterpillar in case of a butterfly and a maggot in case of a housefly. The caterpillar feeds on leaves and grows. After some time, it spins a cocoon around itself called pupa. Later, pupa opens. An adult and butterfly comes out of it. The maggot feeds on garbage and then crawls to a cool place. There, it transforms into a pupa and then to a housefly. Amphibians Animals like frog and fish lay their eggs in water. Young one of a frog is called a tadpole. The tadpole lives in water and grows into an adult. Aquatic animals. A fish lays thousands of eggs in water. Baby fish hatch out of the eggs. Many eggs and baby fish are eaten by big fish. A baby fish is called a fry. Reptiles. Reptiles like turtles, lizards, snakes and crocodiles lay eggs on the ground. Parents do not sit on the eggs to keep them warm. The eggs are warmed by the sun and hatch into young ones. Parents do not protect them and many of them are eaten by other animals. Animals that give birth to young ones, babies. Some animals do not lay eggs. They give birth to young ones, babies, and produce milk to feed. They are called mammals. The animals, mothers, carry their babies within their wombs till they are fully developed to be born. Cats, cows, monkeys, and human beings are mammals. Bats, which fly in the air. Whales and dolphins, which look like fish, are also mammals. Chapter 6 Food and Digestion Children, till now you have come to know that all living beings need food to stay alive. You need energy to work, study and play. Food gives you this energy. Food gives you energy to work. Food helps you to grow. Food keeps you fit and healthy. The food you eat contains different substances. They are called nutrients, carbohydrates, fats, proteins, vitamins and minerals are the main nutrients. Carbohydrates. Carbohydrates are the main energy-giving nutrients. Rice, wheat, potato, maize and sugarcane are rich in carbohydrates. Sugar and starch are two types of carbohydrates in your body. 
people who do physical work need a lot of energy. So they need more carbohydrates. Do you know, glucose is the simplest form of carbohydrate. Fats. Fats give more energy than carbohydrates. Fat keeps your body warm. Ghee. Butter, cooking oil and nuts are rich in fats. Your body does not need fats in large quantities. Eat fats in lesser quantities or it may make you obese or can cause heart problems. Proteins. Proteins are bodybuilding nutrients. They help body to grow and to repair damaged tissues of the body. Growing children need more proteins. Fish, meat, eggs, pulses, milk, soya bean, etc. are rich in proteins. Vitamins and minerals. Vitamins and minerals are protective nutrients. Vitamins help body to fight diseases and minerals help to build strong bones, teeth and healthy blood. You need these vitamins and minerals in small quantities. Milk, fish, meat, cereals, fresh vegetables and fruits are rich in vitamins and minerals. Sources of vitamins and their functions. Vitamin A. It is present in eggs, fruits, vegetables, etc. It keeps eyes and skin healthy. Vitamin B. It is present in cereals, unpolished rice, green vegetables, etc. It helps in the proper growth and functioning of muscles and nerves. Vitamin C. It is present in vegetables, fresh fruits, etc. It protects you against cold and infection. It also makes your gums strong. Vitamin D. It is present in milk, butter, cheese, etc. It is required too for strong bones and teeth. Vitamin E. It is present in cereals, green vegetables, eggs, etc. It helps in the normal growth of the body. Vitamin K. It is present in fish, green vegetables, etc. It helps in blood clotting. Other components. Roughage and water are also important to your body. Roughage contains fibers which help to remove waste material from the body. Water helps in digestion. Balanced diet. The food that you eat every day is called diet. A diet which contains all the nutrients in the correct proportion is called a balanced diet. You should always take balanced diet, otherwise you may fall sick and also your growth may be affected. Do you know? An average person eats 50 tons of food and drinks about 40,000 liters of water in a lifetime. Digestion of food. Digestion is a process in which food is broken down into simpler soluble substances which are usable to your body. Digestion begins in the mouth. When you chew food, saliva mixes with food to make it a fine paste. Saliva breaks down insoluble starch into soluble sugar. Now it goes to stomach through the food pipe. In the stomach, food mixes with more digesting juices which break down the proteins in the food into simpler form. From the stomach, food goes to a long coiled pipe called the small intestine. Its walls produce more digestive juices. The liver and pancreas also pour their juices into the small intestine. These juices complete the digestion. Blood vessels of small intestines absorb the digestive food. Digested food is now carried to the various parts of the body. Undigested food is passed to large intestine which absorbs mineral and extra water. The waste called feces is expelled out through the anus. Understand the digestion process in the following way. Food goes from mouth to food pipe, from food pipe to stomach, from stomach 
to small intestine. From small intestine, the digested food goes to different body parts and the undigested food goes to large intestine and from large intestine it is passed out through the anus. Good eating habits. Wash your hands before and after every meal. Eat at regular intervals, else it will spoil your appetite. Eat a balanced diet every day. Drink 8 to 10 glasses of water every day. Chew your food properly and do not overeat. Rinse your mouth after eating anything. Be healthy and conscious. Most children love to eat burgers, pizzas, chocolates, etc. But eating too much of these is not good for health. They contain a lot of fat and carbohydrates, which can make them heavy. Always eat nutritious food. Do you know, most of the food contains water. Three-fourths of our body weight is due to water. Proper handling of food. Do not overcook the food. It may spoil nutrients in it. Cereals and pulses should be kept in airtight containers. Air and moisture can spoil them. Keep the food always covered. Keep leftover food in the refrigerator. Otherwise, bacteria and germs will spoil it. Keep the fruits, vegetables, eggs, meat, etc. in the refrigerator. Low temperature keeps them fresh for a long time. Chapter 7 Our Teeth Children, you chew food with the help of your teeth. Clean and well-shaped teeth look pretty. Teeth give a good look to your face and help you speak clearly. Old persons who do not have teeth face difficulty in speaking. Growth of Teeth A newborn baby does not have any teeth. When the baby is six to seven months old, teeth begin to appear. Normally, front teeth appear earlier than the back teeth. By the time the child is three years old, it has a set of twenty teeth called milk teeth or temporary teeth. At about the age of six, milk teeth start falling and by the age of twelve, all the milk teeth are replaced by permanent teeth. There are usually 32 permanent teeth. Structure of a tooth Teeth are firmly fixed in the jaws. Teeth grow from the gums. A tooth has basically two parts, the crown and the root. Crown is above the gum line and the root is below the gum line. The tooth has a white covering called enamel. It is the hardest material of the human body. Inside enamel is dentine, which forms the main part of the tooth. The central part of the tooth is called pulp. It contains blood vessels and nerves. Blood vessels provide food to the teeth. Cementum covers most of the root of the tooth. It attaches the tooth to the bones in the jaw. Types of teeth There are four different types of teeth in your mouth. They all have different functions. Incisors The front four teeth in each jaw are called incisors. They are chisel shaped and are used for cutting and biting food. They are also called cutting teeth. Canines There are four teeth in all, two in each jaw. They are on either side of the incisors. They are pointed and help in tearing the food. They are also called tearing teeth. Premolars There are eight premolars in all, four in each jaw. They are next to canines. They are broad and flat and help in crushing or cracking food. They are also called cracking teeth. Molars 
molars are the last teeth towards the back of your mouth. They are twelve in all, six in each jaw. They are next to premolars. They are bigger, flatter and broader. Help you in grinding the food. They are also called grinding teeth. You can learn the sequence of teeth as ICPM, incisor, canine, premolar, molar. Tooth decay. When you eat something, bits of food sometimes get stuck between the teeth. Germs in the mouth start growing on these bits. A sticky, yellowish covering indicates the presence of germs. Germs produce acidic juices which harm the enamel of the teeth and it starts dissolving. This causes a small hole in the teeth called cavity. When you eat more and more food particles, enter the cavity. Make it bigger and tooth turns black. This is decaying of teeth. If not cared, decay can spread to other teeth. Tooth decay causes many problems like holes or cavities in the teeth, toothache, foul smell from mouth, tooth loss, stomach disorders. Preventing tooth decay. Teeth are very important for you. Care for them and prevent tooth decay. Follow the simple tips as Do not eat too much of sweets or chocolates. Brush twice daily in the morning and before going to bed. After eating every time, rinse your mouth always. Replace your toothbrush after every three months. Eat food rich in calcium like milk, milk product, ragi and fajra. Visit a dentist to examine the teeth after every six months. Do you know, tooth decay is a common disease in the children. Chapter 8 The World of Microbes Children, till now you may have seen birds, animals, humans and other small insects around you. Besides all above, there are tiny living organisms which you cannot see with your naked eyes. These organisms are called microorganisms. They are all around you, in water, in air, in the soil and even inside you. You can see them only through a microscope. These are called microbes. Some microbes are useful and some are harmful to you. The microbes that cause diseases are called germs. There are four types of microbes, bacteria, viruses, protozoa and fungi. Bacteria Bacteria are found everywhere on the earth in abundance. They are of different shapes, spiral, rod-like or round. Some diseases caused by bacteria are tuberculosis, diphtheria and pneumonia. Viruses. Viruses are smaller than bacteria and have different shapes. They cause diseases like polio, measles, smallpox, dysentery, viral fever, common cold and influenza. Protozoa. They live in wet places. Some live inside the human body. They cause dysentery, dengue and malaria. Fungi. Fungi are non-green small plants that grow on dead and decaying matter. They grow best in dark and damp places. Food poisoning and skin diseases like ringworm and athlete's foot is caused by them. Useful microbes. Some microbes are very useful to humans. A fungus called yeast makes bread or idlis fluffy and soft. Some fungi decompose dead animals and leaves. 
mushroom, a fungi is a good source of protein. A kind of bacteria converts milk into curd. Medicine. Penicillin is obtained from a fungus called penicillium. Do you know? Penicillin was discovered by Alexander Fleming. It was once called the wonder drug as it saved millions of lives. Louis Pasteur was the first to state that germs cause many diseases when they enter our body. Prevention from microbes. Some microbes are harmful too. You should protect yourself from these microbes. Do the following. Eat clean food and drink clean water. Keep your body and surroundings clean and germ-free. Trim your nails regularly and keep them clean. Microbes cannot grow in very cold condition. So, keep food in the refrigerator. Also, they cannot grow in hot food. So, milk is boiled. Making food dry also does not allow microbes to grow. Chapter 9 Safety First Children, you may have seen many accidents in your surroundings. For example, road accidents, accidents due to gas leakage, fire, etc. Accidents can happen anywhere, at home, in school, on the road, or in the park. Generally, cause of accidents is carelessness or hurry. Most of the accidents can be prevented by following some safety rules. Safety at home. Carelessness can cause accidents at home. Follow some rules to avoid accidents. In the kitchen, never wear synthetic clothes while working in the kitchen. Wear always cotton clothes. Throw vegetable and fruit peels into the dustbin. Never play with a knife or a blade. Someone may slip on the wet floor, so wipe immediately. Turn off the gas stove when not in use. Avoid gas leakage. In the bathroom, keep the bathroom floors clean and dry when not in use. Place a non-slip mat just outside the bathroom door to wipe out wet feet. Do not leave soap on the floor. One may slip. Avoid getting poisoned. Do not taste anything you are not sure about. Do not eat food items which have been kept for several days without proper care. Several medicines are poisonous. Always consult your elders before consuming. Avoid electric shocks. Do not touch electrical fittings with wet or damp hands. Do not touch a heater or electric stove if switched on. In case of an electric shock, turn off the mains. Safety outside the home. Extra care may be taken. When you are outside of your house, such as Always walk on the footpath and keep to your left. Cross the road at the zebra crossing or use the subway. While crossing the road, look to your right, then to the left, again to the right. And if the road is clear, cross the road. Do not run or play on the road. Do not rush up and down the stairs and do not push people. First aid. Immediate help given to an injured person is called first aid. First aid can save life. A first aid box or kit should contain an antiseptic lotion, Dettol or Savlon. Gauze or sterilized cotton pads. A pair of scissors. Bandage. 
antiseptic cream for cuts and burns, a bottle of methylated spirit, adhesive tape, first aid tips for cuts and wounds, wash small cuts and wounds with the help of cotton, antiseptic lotion and water. For minor cuts, use a band-aid. For a deeper cut, apply antiseptic cream. Then, keep a cotton swab. Now, wrap it with a sterilized bandage. For burns, wash the burnt area with cold running water or put an ice pack till the skin irritation is gone. Apply an antiseptic cream like Bernol on the affected area. For insect bites, apply calamine lotion on the affected area. For bee and wasp biting, apply a paste of baking soda with an antiseptic cream. If a person has fainted, make the person lie down with his head lower than the rest of the body to increase blood supply to the brain. There are some general rules. Keep them in mind always. Do not panic. Call an elder or a doctor. Do not crowd around the victim. Try to make the victim comfortable. Chapter 10 Our Clothes Human beings wear clothes. Clothes are your basic need. They protect you from dust, germs, insects, heat and cold. Clothes make you look decent and smart. People wear different clothes according to the climate. Clothes in different seasons. In hot season, you wear cotton clothes. They are light and absorb sweat. Cotton clothes are very comfortable in hot weather. In cold season, you wear woolen clothes like sweaters, coats and jackets. Woolen clothes keep the body warm. In rainy season, people wear raincoats and use umbrellas to protect themselves from getting wet. Uniforms Professionals wear clothes according to their jobs. These clothes are called uniforms. Doctors, nurses, lawyers, soldiers, postmen and students wear uniforms. Clothes and culture People also wear clothes according to their cultures and tradition. For example, in India, people of Jammu and Kashmir wear a thin long dress called Firan. Traditional dress of Kerala consists of Mundu and Neriyatu. Some traditional dresses have become national dresses. Kimono is the national dress of Japan. And Sari is the national dress of the women of India. Clothing materials. Fibers are the basic clothing material. Fibers are twisted together to make yarn. And yarn makes fabrics. Fabrics are stitched to make clothes. Fibers are of two types. Natural and synthetic fibers. Natural fibers. Fibers obtained from nature are called natural fibers. These are obtained either from plants or animals. Cotton, jute, flax and hemp are plant fibers. Wool and silk are animal fibers. Synthetic fibers. Synthetic fibers are man-made. Nylon and polyester are some examples of synthetic fibers. These are prepared artificially and possess various qualities like waterproof, stretchable and wrinkle-free. But 
they do not absorb sweat and catch fire easily. Caring of clothes. Proper care of clothes is very important. To keep them well maintained, follow these steps. Cleaning. Clothes should be cleaned using soap or washing powder. Silk and heavy embroidery clothes should be dry cleaned. Drying. Dry the clothes after cleaning, but not in bright sunlight, else their colours may fade away. Ironing. Clean dry clothes should be ironed before keeping them in the almira. Ironing makes them wrinkle-free. Storing. Clothes should be kept properly in an almira. Protect them from insects using repellents or dry neem leaves. Chapter 11 Sun, Air, Water and Weather Weather is the condition of atmosphere at a given place and time in terms of temperature, atmospheric pressure, wind and moisture. Weather can change day to day, place to place and even hour to hour. I will tell you the causes of weather change. The sun's role in weather change. Rotation of the earth on its axis causes day and night. Earth revolves around the sun. One half of it is close to the sun, while the other half is away from it. The part closer to the sun has warmer and longer days, and so it is summer in this part. The part away from the sun has cooler and shorter days, so it is winter in this part. Thus, revolution of the earth causes change in the seasons. However, even during one season, weather can change day to day or even hour to hour. The sun causes wind to blow. The heat of the sun heats up the air. It becomes lighter and rises. The cool, heavier air moves in to take its place. The sun causes change in the states of water. The heat of the sun changes water into water vapor. This water vapor rises and forms clouds. When clouds become too heavy, they fall as rain. Water vapor falls as snow when the atmosphere is extremely cold. Air. Air contains Water vapors, smoke, dust, and germs. It is as a thick layer around the earth. Moving air is called wind. Fast and strong winds can cause a storm. Let me tell you now about air currents. Land and sea breezes. The earth is made up of land and water. Sun rays heat both. The land heats up faster than water during the day and cools down faster than water at night due to difference between heating and cooling of land and water sea breeze and land breeze are formed sea breeze the land heats up more quickly than the sea during the day air above land gets heated becomes lighter and rises up cooler air from the sea rushes to take its place Thus, winds blow from the sea to the land during the day called sea breeze. Land breeze. At night, the land cools down faster than the sea. So, hot air above the sea rises up. Cooler air from the land rushes to take its place. Now the wind blows from land to the sea during the night called land breeze. Water. About three-fourths of the earth's surface is covered with water. It is found in the rivers, lakes, seas and oceans. It is also found under the ground, called groundwater. It is also present in the air as water vapor. Evaporation When water is heated, it changes to water vapor. This is called evaporation. The water vapor being lighter rises up in the atmosphere. Factors affecting the rate of evaporation. 
temperature. Water evaporates faster when weather is hot. Wet clothes dry up faster on a sunny day as compared to a cloudy day. Wind. On a windy day, evaporation is very fast. Wind increases the rate of evaporation. A handkerchief dries faster under a moving fan. Exposed area. Rate of evaporation is faster when the surface is large. Spread clothes dry faster than the folded or overlapped clothes. Humidity. Humidity is the amount of water vapor in the air. If the humidity is high, evaporation slows down. And if humidity is low, evaporation becomes faster. That is why clothes in rainy season take more time to dry than the summer season. Condensation. When water vapor changes to liquid water due to cooling, it is called condensation. Due to condensation, you get rain. The sun evaporates the water from the land, the pond and the sea. Air containing water vapor gets warm, rises up high in the sky and cools down. Water vapor condenses to form tiny droplets of water. These droplets join to form clouds. As the more droplets join together, they make water drops. When the water drops become heavy, they fall down as rain. Sometimes water vapor comes to the ground in other forms, like fog, dew, frost, hail, snow, etc. Fog. Fog is a cloud that is formed near the ground. This occurs when thick clouds of tiny drops of water form just above land or water. Dew. It is formed when the water vapor condenses on cool objects, like cool blades of grass. You may have noticed dew drops on the grass, like pearls, early in the morning in a park. Frost. On very cold nights, the dew drops freeze to form tiny ice crystals. This is called frost. Hail. When raindrops fall through a very cold region of air, they freeze and become ice. When this ice falls on the earth, it is called hailstones. Snow. In cold places like mountains, water vapor condenses to form ice crystals instead of water drops. This ice is called snow. Purification of water. Water becomes polluted due to mud, sand particle, waste from factories and sewage. A variety of harmful germs grow in such water. Drinking polluted water is dangerous. It can cause diseases like typhoid, cholera, jaundice and diarrhea. Water can be purified in many ways. Boiling If water is boiled for at least 10 minutes, all harmful germs are killed and it gets purified. Boiled water should be covered and stored in a clean pot. Sedimentation do it yourself. Take some muddy water in a beaker. Keep it for some time undisturbed. The mud will settle down at the bottom of the beaker. This process of settling down of impurities is called sedimentation. But this water is not fit for drinking. Decantation. After sedimentation, some clean water is carefully poured into another vessel without disturbing the sediments. This is called Decantation Filtration The process of purifying water through a filter paper is called filtration. Chlorination Chlorine is a gas which kills germs. Chlorine tablets and bleaching powder are used to purify water. Tips to handle water Water is very precious. Do not waste it. Keep water in clean vessels which are covered. Drinking water should be kept away from bins and drains. Storage utensils should be cleaned regularly. Chapter 12 Rocks and Soils Rocks Surface of the earth is made of rocks and soils. Rocks are hard and are made of minerals. They differ in size, shape, color, composition and use. 
some common rocks are granite, marble, graphite, sandstone and pumice. Soil Soil is the topmost soft layer of Earth's surface. It supports all forms of life on the Earth. It consists of sand, clay, pebbles, humus, water and air. Formation of soil Soil formation is a slow process. It takes thousands of years to make soil of one inch. Rocks are the basic material for the formation of soil. Wind, water and temperature act continuously on the rocks, breaking them into smaller pieces. These smaller pieces rub against each other due to water and wind and become further smaller particles like pebbles, gravel and sand. These particles get mixed with humus and form soil. Types of soil. There are three types of soil. Sandy soil, clay soil and loamy soil. Sandy soil. It is made up of sand. It is yellow, grey or light brown in colour. The particles are loosely packed. It is mostly found in deserts or on seashores. Clayey soil. It is made up of clay. It is very smooth to touch. There is very little space between the particles. It can hold a lot of water. It is found in ponds and riverbeds. Loamy soil. It is a mixture of sand and clay. It can hold enough water and air. It also has humus in it. This soil is the best for the growth of plants. Soil erosion. The blowing and carrying away of soil by wind or running water is called soil erosion. Human activities like cutting off trees, building roads and industries have intensified the rate of soil erosion. Overgrazing by the animals also has increased soil erosion. Soil erosion removes the precious topsoil. Useful plants now cannot grow well and land becomes barren. Soil Conservation The protection of soil from being washed or blown away by natural forces is called soil conservation. Soil can be conserved in the following ways. By plantation Soil erosion can be checked by growing more and more plants. The roots of the plants hold the soil firmly and do not let the top fertile soil be washed away. By terrace farming In hilly regions, rain water washes away a lot of topsoil due to its flow. Here, terraces are made on the slopes. They reduce water speed and prevent soil erosion. By constructing dams and embankments Constructing dams and embankments along rivers check water speed and thus prevent soil erosion. By stopping overgrazing Due to overgrazing by animals, topsoil becomes loose and is easily blown or washed away. Stopping overgrazing prevents soil erosion. Overgrazing can be stopped by erecting fences around the newly grown trees. Chapter 13 Our Solar System Children, when you look at the clear night sky, what do you see? Yes, you see thousands of twinkling stars. You also see the moon. Stars are bigger than the earth, but they look like dots. This is because they are very far from us. You people use telescope to see the stars and other heavenly bodies. Solar System The Sun, the eight planets and their satellites, moons and other heavenly bodies together make a family called the Solar System. Now I will tell you about the Solar System. The Sun The Sun is the center of the Solar System. All planets revolve around the Sun. It is a huge ball of hot glowing gases and is the main source of energy on the Earth. Planets Sometimes you see some bright objects in the sky which do not twinkle. 
These are called planets. Planets reflect sunlight. Planets are smaller than stars. The eight planets according to their increasing distances from the sun are Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus and Neptune. All planets move around the sun in a circular path called orbit. Orbits of different planets do not cross each other. Mercury is the closest planet to the sun. It is very hot during the day and very cold at night. It moves faster than any other planet. Venus is the brightest and hottest planet. It is also called the evening and morning star. Earth is neither too hot nor too cold. It is also called water planet. It is the only planet in the solar system where life exists. Mars is covered with reddish sand and rocks. It appears reddish, so is called red planet. Jupiter is the largest planet in the solar system. It shines brightly in the sky. Saturn is the planet with rings. It is the most beautiful planet with shining rings which are made of ice, rocks and dust. Uranus is the second farthest planet from the sun. Neptune is the farthest planet from the sun. It is also very cold. Dwarf planets also move around the sun in their fixed parts. Pluto, Ceres and Eris are dwarf planets. Satellites. Satellites are objects that revolve around the planets. The moon is the satellite of the earth. It has no light of its own. It reflects the light of the sun. Asteroids. Asteroids are small heavenly bodies made of rocks which revolve around the sun mainly between the orbits of Mars and Jupiter. Comets. Comets are heavenly bodies which appear as bright balls of light with a long glowing tail. Its tail is always away from the sun. The most famous comet is Halley's Comet. It is seen after every 76 years. Constellations. The groups of stars forming interesting shapes are called constellations. In the north sky, a group of seven stars which look like dots resembles a large saucepan with a handle. This group is called Saptarishi. Some other well-known constellations are Scorpio, Ursa Major, Ursa Minor, Orion and Leo. You can see a very bright star in the north sky called Pole Star or Thruftara. This star does not change its position. Sailors use this star to find their way on voyages. Artificial satellites. These are man-made satellites which revolve around the Earth as Moon. The first man-made satellite, Sputnik 1, launched in 1957 by the then USSR. Aryabhatta was the first Indian satellite, launched in 1975. The other important Indian satellites are Rohini, Apple, Bhaskara and Insat series satellites. Uses of artificial satellites. They are used to study heavenly bodies, to forecast weather and for communication, to relay television programs, to perform scientific experiments. Do you know? The first living being to go into space was a female dog called Laika. She remained in space for a week and then died. Chapter 14 Matter Children, you see many things around you. At your home, you see tables, chairs, beds, books, etc. All these things take space and have weight. Anything that occupies space and has some weight is called matter. The amount of space that matter takes up is called its volume. States of matter. Matter exists in three states. Solid, liquid and gas. Solid. In solids, molecules are packed very close to each other. Solid is usually hard. Solids do not change their shape easily and have fixed shapes and volume. 
pencil, book, chair, etc. are solids. Liquid In liquids, molecules are not so closely packed as in solids. A liquid has no definite shape, but it occupies the shape of the container. Liquids have volume, but no fixed shape. Water, milk and juice are liquids. Gas In a gas, molecules are very loosely packed. It has no fixed shape or volume. A gas occupies all available shape of a container. Air is a mixture of gases. Change of states of matter the three states of matter are interchangeable. When you heat a solid, it changes into liquid. This process is called melting. When liquid is heated, it changes into a gas. This process is called evaporation. If you still heat a liquid, it starts boiling. If you keep a water tray in a freezer, after some time it turns into ice. Water has frozen and the process is called freezing. Hot vapors touch a cold surface, they change into water. This is called condensation. The formation of rain in the water cycle in the nature is an example of state of matter. Solutions If you take some salt, add water to it and stir it, you will see that salt has dissolved in water. This is called solution. Here, salt is called the solute, water the solvent and the mixture is the solution. Solute plus solvent gives us solution. Salt plus water gives us salty water or salt solution. Chapter 15 Force, Work and Energy Children, while playing cricket or football, you hit a ball or catch it or run with it. You are applying force to hit, catch a ball or running after it. Force is a push or pull. You apply force to move a bicycle, to pull a drawer, to open a door. What force can do? Force can do the following. Move a stationary, resting object. For example, by applying force, you can open the door. Stop a moving object. For example, by catching a ball, you can stop it. Change the direction of a moving object. For example, when a batsman hits the ball with his bat, moving ball changes its direction. Change the speed of a moving object. For example, if a person pushes a moving swing, it moves faster and if he pulls the swing in the opposite direction, it slows down. Change the shape of an object. For example, on pressing an empty plastic bottle, it changes its shape. Kinds of force. There are different types of force. Muscular force. When you push a swing or catch a moving ball, you use your muscles to do the work. This is the muscular force. Friction. When you kick a ball, it moves on the ground for some distance and then it stops. This is called friction. Magnetic force. A magnet Pulls the iron nails towards it. Force applied by the magnet is called magnetic force. Elastic force. When you stretch the rubber strip of a catapult, it applies a force on the stone. This force is called elastic force. Mechanical force. When tools or machines are used to do a work. This is called mechanical force. For example, when a pair of scissors used to cut a piece of paper or clock. Gravitational force. When a ball is thrown upwards, it comes down due to the force of the earth. It is called gravitational force. Work. When by applying a force, an object moves, then only it is said that work has been done. If no movement is produced, it is said that no work has been done. For example, if a boy pushes a chair, it moves, then work has been done. But if he pushes a ball, which does not move, no work has been done by the boy, though he may get tired. Simple machines. When you have to do a difficult work, you use tools. Then these are called simple machines. Machines may be complex, but some simple machines are lever, wheel and axle, inclined plane, pulley, wedge and screw.
Lever. A lever is a long rod which rests upon a support. It is used to lift weights, to open lids and cut things. For example, seesaw, can opener, hammer, used to remove nails, etc. Wheel and axle. In this arrangement, there is a big wheel and a rod, axle, which passes through the center of the wheel. It helps to move or lift objects. For example, a screwdriver, wheels in a vehicle, etc. Inclined plane. It is easier to raise a heavy load by pulling it along a sloping surface rather than lifting it vertically. Sloping surface is called inclined plane. For example, slide, slope, escalator, etc. Pulley. A pulley is used to raise, lower or move loads. It is used to lift loads, hoist flags, draw curtains, move lift and draw water from a well. A pulley is a grooved wheel with a rope or cable around it. Wedge. It is an object with at least one slanting slide which ends in a sharp edge. It is used to cut or split things. For example, an axe and a knife. Screw. It is an inclined plane wrapped around a pole. Cylinder. It holds things together or lifts materials. For example, jaw, lid, vice and boat. Energy. Energy is the ability to do work. It is available in different forms. Let me tell you about some important forms of energy. Wind energy. Energy of moving air is wind energy. Windmill uses this energy to generate electricity and pumping out the underground water. Water energy. Flowing water has energy in it. This energy is used to rotate turbines and then to generate electricity. Electricity thus produced is called hydroelectricity. Heat energy. This form of energy is obtained by burning coal, wood, petrol or gas. The heat produced by burning petrol in a car engine provides the energy needed to run the car. Electrical energy. Energy obtained from electricity is called electrical energy. It is used to light electrical bulbs and to run different electric appliances like iron, refrigerator and geyser. Solar energy. The energy that Earth gets from the sun is called solar energy. It is used in solar heaters and solar cookers for heating and cooking. Plants use solar energy to make food in the green leaves. Chapter 16 Our Environment Children, you know that everything that surrounds you forms the environment. It consists of all living and non-living things. A clean environment is good for all living beings. But over the years, human activities have damaged the environment. This is not good for all living organisms. Pollution, addition of harmful substances into the environment due to human activities is called pollution. There are mainly four types of pollution. Air pollution, water pollution, soil pollution, noise pollution. Air pollution, addition of harmful substances into the air is called air pollution. It is harmful to all living beings. It may cause deadly diseases like asthma and lung cancer. Causes of air pollution Smoke due to burning of coal, diesel in factories and homes causes air pollution. All vehicles driven by diesel and petrol release smoke, which causes air pollution. Water pollution Addition of harmful substances into water is called water pollution. Drinking such polluted water can cause diseases like typhoid, diarrhea or dysentery. Causes of water pollution Toxic household and industrial wastes released into water bodies pollute them. Washing clothes or bathing animals in rivers also causes water pollution. Soil pollution Addition of chemicals into soil is called soil pollution. It decreases the fertility of soil.
causes of soil pollution, dumping of plastic bags, glass bottles and metal containers causes soil pollution. Excessive use of pesticides and fertilizers by farmers causes soil pollution. Noise pollution. Noise pollution is a major problem, especially in large cities. It can cause headache and deafness. Causes of noise pollution. Loud noise produced by cars, trucks, aeroplanes, etc. Causes noise pollution. Loudspeakers cause noise pollution. You must check all kinds of pollution to save your environment. Control of pollution. Now you know how pollution is affecting the environment. Every individual should help in controlling it. See the following. Avoid use of plastic bags which block drains and stop flow of dirty water. Mosquitoes breed in standing water and spread diseases. Decomposable waste should be used to prepare manure or compost. Wet and dry waste should be disposed of separately and be recycled. Before letting dirty water into seas, rivers or lakes, it should be chemically treated to make it harmless. Use CNG or LPG for driving vehicles and cooking food. They are non-polluting fuels. In industries, tall chimneys with filter should be installed to release smoke and gases very high away from the populated area.